God. We need revival. Yes, we do, God. Revive us again. We need revival. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let there be a move, God, from your spirit. Move in this place. Move in this house, God. My God, move. Move in this house. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My soul is in yes. Yes, you will. Oh, God. We pray, God, family. We pray, God, that you move in the homes, that you bless families, Lord. So much there was disruption in these homes, Lord. I pray, God, that there be peace in the homes. Oh, God. Find the enemy now. Find Satan, find the Lord, who's trying to destroy families. Hallelujah. 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 We need you, God, in society, in this nation. Save, Lord. Save, God. Save our children. Save, Lord. Save our young people. Yes, Lord. Young men. Young ladies, God. Oh, God. I ask that you help in the black community. Yes, Lord. Too many of our boys are being killed and going to jail. Lord, turn around. Jesus, oh Jesus, turn this thing around. Oh God, the enemy is attacking our children. He's attacking them, Lord. Lord, there's even a suicidal spirit that is rising among our children. Bind it down. Bind it, Lord. A spirit of depression, Lord, that has been released or released on our children. Oh God. Oh God, help Lord, help Lord, help our children, help these young ladies who have no hope, Lord, who don't know where to go or what to do, God. Yes, Turn them around, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that you give us that ministry, a ministry here, Lord, to help children, to help our young people. God, that you restore the youth department of this church. Yes, Lord, let the children return. Oh, God, let the classes return. Oh, God, you fix it, God. You know how to do it. You know how to open the door. Fix it, God. Fix it, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. We'll look into you, God. In this pandemic time, we'll look into you, God. In this rough time, God, you're able to bless. And I know you're already blessing, God. But pour out more blessings, spiritual blessings, blessing here in the church, God. Hallelujah. Add on to the family. Say that set free. Set free, God. Set free, God. From the bonds of the enemy. From the power of darkness. Break every habit. Put out every stronghold. Bind the hand of sin. He's the deceiver and a liar. Bind the Lord. All the things he's trying to do. Make him take his hands off, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God, I ask you to stir God every sinner that we talk to God. Yes, Lord, that we've been ministering to Lord, that we're witnessing to God, that we're praying about. I pray, God, that you will stir, stir the mind, stir the heart, Lord. Don't let them rest. Don't let them rest, God, in their sin. Don't let them enjoy the plan of sin, but help them to get in a hurry. Oh, God, trouble their mind, trouble their spirits. Oh, Lord, I know you can. I know you can, God. Let the miracle of salvation. 
salvation happen? Yes. Yes, Lord. Save God. Save the lost. Save God. Don't overturn the reach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, bring the backslider back. Uh, bring them back, Lord. Uh, touch the mind. Uh, touch the heart, God. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, well, I want to tell him thank you. Uh, somebody help me tell him thank you. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, Lord, we thank you. Uh, we thank you now. Uh, we praise you. Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, we praise you. Uh, we praise your name. Uh, Yes, Lord. Ha, yes, Lord. Ha, let the weak ha, say that they're strong. Ha, Lord, somebody is about to give in. Ha, about to give up, Lord. Ha, touch their minds. Ha, give them hope now, God. Ha, thank you, Jesus. Ha, strengthen God. Ha, speak to them again, God. Ha, oh, God. Ha, turn around, God. Ha, in the name of Jesus. Ha, yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus, let the church grow. Take us to another level. Take us higher, God. Higher, Lord. Higher, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We pray, God. We pray. We pray. We pray, God, that you take the church to another level. We pray, God, for your anointing. We pray, God, that there be a mighty move of your spirit, a supernatural move. The people need miracles. Let it be so, God. Move by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, those things that are impossible, God, turn around with you, all things are possible. Thank you, Jesus. I'm looking at you, God. I'm looking at you, Lord, to give us a breakthrough. I'm looking at you, God, to turn our situation around. I'm looking at you, God, to heal the whole God who are broken hearted. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help our nation. Help America. Lord, we're in a chaotic time. The economy is shaking. Prices are going up, God. Going up because of greed. Going up because of other things. I pray, God, that you turn that thing around. Let the economy be blessed. I know there's some wicked men and women here. But, God, the saints are here. The church is here. Uh, and we're crying out to you, God. Uh, we're crying out for this nation. Uh, we're crying out for well, turn around. Uh, turn it around, Lord. Uh, turn it around, Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we pray for peace. Uh, Lord, let peace abide. Uh, Peace, Lord. Oh, God, the situation that's there with Russia and Ukraine, Lord, it could develop into a major war. But turn it around, God. Oh, Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Yes, Lord, intervene, Lord, and turn it around. Send the truth back home. Don't let there be in the bloodshed. Work it out, God. Work it out, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. We see you, God. For you are a deliverer. You are our hope in this bad time. Jesus. Help us, God. Help, Lord, help. We need your help. Help, Lord, help. We need you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. Come on and shout hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Let your people become excited again. Excited about who you are. Excited about your kingdom. Let the church, Lord, be excited about coming and being in your presence. Yes, Lord. Put it on our hearts and minds to come to church, God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let the people be 
express by these services. Oh God, by Bible study, the Sunday school. Let the people be blessed. Let them rejoice in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, we seek you. We seek your way. We seek your word. Thank you, Jesus. Let the word come. Let it come, Lord. Not from me. Not from anyone here. Anyone else is here. But let it come from you. That word, Lord, that will penetrate the heart. That word, Lord, that will help every one of us. Lord, that word that will help us, God, to examine ourselves, to see where we are. In the faith, Lord, time is running out. We cannot play with it. We cannot be half-stepping. Oh, God, time is winding up. We've got to be ready. Every one of us, Lord, that we are ready. Help me, Lord. Help me tonight. You want to tell him, help me, Lord. Come on, everybody, lift your hands and tell him, help me, Lord. Come on, say, tell him, help me, Lord. I need your help. I need you, God. I need your help. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, oh, Jesus, oh, Lord, we praise you, God, we magnify you, we glorify you, we thank you, God, we thank you for this evening, we thank you, God, for this time of prayer, this time of refreshing, Lord, give the church a mind to pray, a spirit of prayer, give the church, Lord, a mind to press on in the name of Jesus. Let the saints be encouraged. Lord, let them be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Some of them have had it pretty rough. Some of them have had hard times even today. But I pray you strengthen the brother. Strengthen your people, Lord. Both male and female. Help now, God, in a time of crisis. I pray for the bereaved, God, that you would touch, oh God, touch their heart and mind. Look on Sister LaVeda. Help them down, Lord, in this time. Strengthen her and the family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Look on Taylor, God. Look on Taylor. Yes, that young God. lady in Clarksville yes, is having a rough time in her physical body. Yes, I pray God. for her healing. I pray for her deliverance. Yes, God, God, I pray for a miracle. Yes, in, the in the name of Jesus. I look for a miracle. Yes, God. I all on my hand. Yes, I'm looking for a miracle. Yes, God. Oh, God. Get on my hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you now. Yes. Lord, I magnify your yes, name. Sir. I want you to meet us, God. Yes, meet sir. us in this place. Every time we come, yes, meet us, oh God. The Sunday morning service. Lord, meet us, oh God, in the prayer revival next week. Yes, sir. yes, Lord. yes Lord. Let there be a difference. Yes, Lord. Lord, let there be a difference because of the prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Let, oh God. Let wonderful things happen. Yes, Unusual things happen in the time of prayer, yes, the time of fasting and concentration. My God, yes, show yourself strong yes, in the name of Jesus. There were times, oh God, in Old Testament, you showed yourself to the people of Israel. You spoke to them directly, Lord. Oh, God, and I know your word. I said that in any day you have spoken to us by your son. You speak to us through your word. Lord, let it be so. Speak, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, let a wonder, let a wonder. Let it take place here in this house, Lord, in the prayer revival. God, we need to be revived. We need to be revived. Oh, God, we need to be revived. Hey, hey, hey. We need to be revived, Lord. We need to shake it in this place. We need to stir in God. Jesus, I see you. Jesus, I will deliver. Oh, deliver, deliver. Oh, deliver, deliver. Deliver, Lord, from the clutches of Satan. Deliver now. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Bind it, bind it, bind it. Bind it now, bind it now, bind it now. Oh, Jesus. We rebuke death. We rebuke death right now. We rebuke death, hey, hey. We rebuke death right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak life. I speak life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I speak life now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I speak life now. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hey, 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 I'm a Mahaya. He's another Mahaya. He's a Mahaya. Oh, Mahaya. Oh, God, fix it now. Fix it now. Fix it now. Fix it now. In the name of Jesus. Fix it now, Lord. Fix it, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm looking at you, God. I'm looking at you, God. They're going to do things. My God, my God. Oh, Lord. Oh Lord, oh Lord, let the people be encouraged. Yes, let them be encouraged, oh God. Restore the joy, the joy of the Lord, the joy of our salvation. Let there be peace for your people, peace of mind, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. God, I praise you. God, I worship you. I give you the glory, give you the honor in all things. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. All right. Those that are, are listening by Facebook and Zoom, give us just a few minutes. We've got to reset up. So just stay with us just a few more minutes. We'll be back with you. <laughs> And I thought you'd go put that out there. Can you hear me on Zoom? Can someone? Uh... Yes, we can hear you, Sarah. Thank you so much. I have no idea, Sally. Oh, did you bring my book? That's probably because you up there. Not going to be the same when you come down here. Sister Lee, may I borrow a book? Yes, ma'am. Can you ask for it back, please? <laughs> you, please don't keep school. <laughs> the Lord bless you. We thank God for you, and we're grateful for everyone that's here for Bible study. All right, and we had to take a moment to kind of um, reassemble, reset, rather saying. But let's go right into 
our lesson for tonight. It is a familiar lesson. Uh, we're in session, what is that? Session 11, hey. it's on page 100. Did he text in 12 back? Okay, let me see that I text the wrong thing. I, I thought I said uh, session 11. I did say 12. Yes, you did. Oh, I am so sorry. Well, let's see. I, I, they tell me I, I typed the wrong thing in. It doesn't matter. Uh, I don't think it matters that much. And you all studied. <laughs> let's go. I'm, I, let me apologize to Little the Valley because I, I, I sent the wrong information out. I've been um, doing something just about all day, kind of running. So please forgive me. Uh, lesson or session 11 is pretty easy. It's, it's not a real difficult lesson. Now, se session 12, we do intend to uh, teach this lesson as well. It is a little bit more difficult. We'd have to go a little bit slower with uh, lesson uh, 12, I can go to lesson 12. I can go to it, it's just that I have not, uh, just really have studied this for tonight, but we okay. can go to it. Let's, let since y'all studied it. I didn't study. Since Riley said y'all didn't study, what about you folks that I see here on, on in Zoom? Did you all? So, so Yolanda studied. What about I, I did, did. Did the rest of y'all studied it? We did. They, they said they did. So I you said did. we did. Uh, I said we didn't. When I got uh -huh. it. <laughs> so you'll be good. I was supposed to study. You just told me today. Yeah, we got well, it later. I, I understand that I may have said today, but let, let's, let's just say this from now on. Everybody, please <laughs> listen to me. From now on. If I forget to tell you which one we studied, it's the next lesson in the book because we're getting ready to order some more of these books. I think the lessons are pretty good. Mm -hmm. The next uh, set is going to be in the New Testament. Kind of looked at them, I think they'll be pretty good. So uh, from now on, everybody, just go to the next lesson unless we give other instruction. Yes, sir, Pastor. And that would kind of suffice that. All right. So let's look at. Uh, uh, session 11 and we'll go to 12 on next, next week. week the Lord say the same now there is a possibility I'm not sure yet but there is a slight possibility that Superintendent Riley will be back with us next week for part two which section 12 kind of go along with it, all, it, it, it definitely ties in with what we will be presenting so uh We'll get some of that next week, one or the other. If Superintendent Riley could come, we're doing part two of the end times. If he's not able to come, we would definitely do session 12 of the Lord's Church Society, which is dealing with end time. It's a very interesting lesson. All right, session 11, trust exhibited. The little uh, statement under that, which I take as a lesson name, said believers can trust God in all circumstances. So let me ask the question to you, uh, that are in this class, what does this subject actually say to you? Trust exhibited. What does this subject it speak it up? Said, it said to me that trust shown. Uh, you know. All right, so see, Alana said to her, trust shown. All right, so it is a trust uh, that can be sensed or something that can be seen. Mm -hmm. All right. It's one thing to declare that I trust God, mm -hmm. but it's another thing when you show it and the people, particularly those that are unbelievers, can actually see uh, in various circumstances that you trust God. All right. The, the little introduction on page 100 said one of the benefits of walking with God for many years is seeing firsthand how he can be trusted, and that the Bible is right about everything. 
The Bible is right about money, true commitment, sex and marriage, leadership, relationships, and so much more. Long-term believers who live by God's principles see them validated again and again. Let's read uh, some of the background information tonight. If you don't have a book, the lesson is coming from Daniel uh, chapter 6, verses 10 through 24. But the background that they give starts at, at verse 1. So it's good if you, if you were read, just read the entire chapter, Daniel chapter 6. Uh, but let's read some of the background. Sister Yolanda, you better uh, read it, uh, especially those first two paragraphs. Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 through 28. Babylon fell to the Medes and the Persians around 539 BC. Darius, as the Mede, was given the jurisdiction of Babylon at the age of 62. Daniel had been taken into exile by the Babylonians around 605 BC and held in captivity for 70 years. When Babylon was overtaken by the Medes and Persians, he was likely in his 80s. He must have been known by Darius, for Darius gave him an important role within the new kingdom. Daniel became one of the three principal administrators. Apparently, he did an extraordinary job for Darius, uh, decided to make him the head of government under his authority. Daniel's position and promotion created animosity among the other officials in the province, mm -hmm. but they devised a plot to get rid of him. They went to Darius and requested he enforce an edit that it that if anyone was found worshiping a god or man except Darius for 30 days, he would be thrown into the lion's den. They knew Daniel's loyalty to the Lord and that each day he prayed three times to the Lord. When Daniel defied the king's edict, all the officials went before Darius to form him that Daniel had resisted the king's order. Daniel was subsequently thrown into the lion's den. The king could not sleep that night and hurried to the lion's den at dawn, crying out in the hope of hearing Daniel's voice. Mm. Daniel replied that God's angel had shut the lion's mouth. Remove, removed from the den, Daniel was found to be unharmed. The king then ordered Daniel's and their families to be thrown into the den, where they all perished. Darius sent word throughout his kingdom that people should honor Daniel's God. After his deliverance, Daniel continued serving in the Persian court. Okay, thank you. So uh, that's a really uh, summary of the lesson, but we want to dig deeper into some of the details. Now, the, the empire has changed. Uh, you go back to Daniel chapter 5, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, that's who we studied a few weeks ago, King Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian, the one that went insane, uh, uh, crawled on his knees seven years, even grass like an ox. When Nebuchadnezzar has died, his grandson, Belshazzar, uh, became, became one of the co-regents. So they, uh, Belshazzar, his grandson, and I think it was Nebuchadnezzar's uh, son-in-law, they reigned together. Well, anyway, Belshazzar was, was in Babylon the night that the Medes and Persians defeated the Babylon. You remember the story? Uh, here he's sitting in the palace room drinking out the gold vessels that had been brought from the temple of God back in Judah. And uh, he looked over there at the side and there was a handwriting on the wall. Many, many tackle you parson. Part of the message uh, that, that, uh, was, that was interpreted from those words that the kingdom that night was finished. It was coming to an end. Belshazzar was killed. And when you go into chapter six, where we are tonight, there's a new ruler in Babylon. Mm -hmm. There's a new ruler, Darius the Mede, uh, who is of the Mede and Persian Empire. All right, so things have changed. Now, also, I want you to know that Daniel, she just read it, Daniel is about 80 years old. Mm -hmm. When we first pick up in Daniel chapter one, it is believed that Daniel probably was about 17 or 18 years old. The story of Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who refused to eat the king's meat or drink the king's wine. They took a, a stand there for righteousness with what they knew was in the will of God. 
So a lot of years have passed. He's an older man. I don't know if Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego were yet living. We have no idea. But, uh, you know, one thing about living right and living for the Lord, God many times will uh, smile upon you. His favor will be there under some difficult times. I mean, look at the fact that Daniel had been taken from his home where he's a captain. Really, he's a, you know, he really had been a slave. But under Nebuchadnezzar's time, he rose up. Rose up to be a very important dignitary that Nebuchadnezzar trusted. Now, when you get to Daniel chapter five, under Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, Belshazzar, it seemed like Daniel had been pushed over to the side because Belshazzar, if you read it carefully, kind of read between the lines, he really didn't know who Daniel was. Somebody told him, I think it was the king's mother, who told him about Daniel. And, and about the excellent spirit that he had within it. And of course, he interpreted the dream for Belshazzar. And what did that king promise? The king promised to exalt him again, but the kingdom was going to what, come to an end. Now you got some new, you got a new sheriff in town, uh, different nationalities taking up. And look at what God does. Here again, he promotes Daniel in his old age. It's something about when you serve God and you do what you're supposed to do, and you do it with fidelity, you do you you have integrity, God will bless you, God will make a way. Daniel uh is is set. Look at this. If you go back to uh Daniel, let's read a couple of verses here that's not written in our book here. But in Daniel chapter six, verse one says, It pleased Darius, that's the king, to set over the kingdom a hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. So you got you got 120 different provinces, and each one of them had like a governor over the province. They were known as princes. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king uh, should have no damage. So you got 120 princes who served like governors. He appointed three presidents, those uh, princes, the 120, had to report to what? The three presidents. But look at the three presidents. Daniel is number one. He's the first one. So he set above the other two. Now, one thing about having God's favor, God's blessings, you need to understand likewise that people become jealous. Mm -hmm. The spirit of jealousy, envy, and strife, you know it comes from Satan. He cannot stand to see God's people blessed. And what he'll do, he'll stir people up against you with false accusations. He'll stir them up to dig ditches for you to fall in, to trap you. It, he just stir people up, animosity, just to, to go against you, just to damage you, to make you feel bad. And this is exactly what's going to happen and does happen in this particular lesson. Let me stop here. Somebody might want to uh, make a couple of comments. Uh, on this lesson, trust exhibited. I want to tell us something that uh, uh, a particular point you want us to bring out, or you could have a question. Well, I kind of want to bring out uh, verse three in this um, in this passage. Uh, we noticed that Daniel had an excellent spirit. He had a spirit of excellence. Yeah. And so um, that that has been something that has really intrigued me. Uh, over the years, because I, I wanted to know well, what is this spirit of excellence that Daniel had, and so as I as I've studied and, and looked at what it was, Daniel always worked with integrity. He always did the best, and what he was whatever task he was given, he always put forth the best best effort, as as I understand it, uh, as the interpret they interpret what it, uh, an, a spirit of excellence is. And so it bears record with what even my devotion this morning, as I was reading about everything we do, we ought to do it as unto the Lord. You know, we ought to do it as we, we are honoring God. And so this seems to be the same thing that Daniel had going on. And so when you, when you operate in such a way, it sets you above the rest. And, uh, you know, when you are doing, you're, you're not doing the bare minimum on your job. You're not doing the bare minimum. You know, you have the right attitude when you're doing whatever you're doing. You always want it to be your very best. 
And so this is what happens when, uh, you know, when Daniel has this spirit of excellence, he's looked at from multiple kings, you know, multiple kings have found him and, and have placed him in a place of importance. They have noticed who Daniel is. And so Daniel has been promoted. And as Pastor already said, many times when you're promoted, people don't always like it. You know, that old green eyed monster starts to show up, even like the same thing that happened with David. You know, Saul was fine as long as David was fighting Goliath. But when the people began to recognize Dan, uh, David, well, Saul had a problem with that. He was, he was, he became jealous. So it's the same thing going on here tonight as those people around Daniel, you know, we wanna, we're gonna try to trip him up. But if you continue to do what is right, it makes no difference who works against you in secret. The Lord will still bring you out all right because he has promised us he will make your enemies be at peace with you. He will make your enemies your footstool. And so um, uh, this is what we see here with Daniel. And so I like the subject talking about trust put on public display. The fact that how you act shows people how, what, how you feel about God, shows people the trust that you have in him. Because we don't see anywhere where Daniel panicked. You know, when, it, then it, when he heard the edict that you, you're gonna have to bow down, Daniel continued doing what he had always done. I serve God, you know, and he, he wasn't gonna change that. And so, Pastor, that just, it encourages me tonight because, you know, we have to have that same resolve that my trust is in God, my faith is in God, and I'm going to serve him no matter what. And so, as we can see, when, when, it, when time comes, God is always going to show up. He showed up for Daniel, and he'll show up for Yolanda. He'll show up for Mary. He'll show up for Valerie. So, I thank God for that tonight. All right. Anyone else like to um, make comments? You that are on Zoom, all you got to do is unmute your mic. We'd be glad to hear from you. You that are on Facebook, we can read your comments. Oh, you got it. Okay. All right. If you look at the next page, we're going to look at the first outline that says the trap set. Uh, you you want to read for us again, Sister Yolanda? Trap set. Those verses. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Has God not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alter not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of, of Judah, regarded not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but making his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. All right, thank you. And before we get started on this section, we're going to be reading some more verses. You that are at home on Zoom in particular, uh, I'd like for some of you all to, to participate a little bit more. You can also read the verses because we'll be able to hear you as well as the people that are on Facebook. So somebody uh, will get to that point. Um, think about reading for us, if you will. Now, we st she just read verse 10 through 14, but there's a verse back uh, earlier that I want to point out, and that's verse 4, because when these individuals, all these are government officials, those other two uh, presidents and some of those princes that were over the 120 provinces, the verse 4 said they sought to find uh, to, to, to find an occasion or sought, yeah, to sought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. In other words, they look for a fault in Daniel. Yes. You know, he must be doing something. You know, like uh, presidential 
politics, them guys running for president, what do they do? The opposing group, they, they call it opposition research. Yeah, they if you didn't know this, I noticed from teaching social studies some years ago, the Democrats got a group that sometimes work 25 hours a day, so to speak, different teams coming, and they look for every little detail on the opposing. The Republicans do the same thing. And so sometimes what you think is what we may call dirt, all that stuff comes out, you know, to try to damage the reputation of their opposer and such. So that's that's how politics work. And, and this is exactly what's going on here. They were looking for something on Daniel, particularly did he do something that was a little uh, illegal mm-hmm. in kingdom bid? They couldn't find anything. He was clean. And so they said, well, we know one thing we can get him on because he was a man of prayer. Yes. He See, he Daniel was the type of person that he prayed and everybody knew he prayed because he prayed out loud. I think about some of the uh, the saints in the Church of God in Christ, modern times. Uh, we were in uh, Memphis, Tennessee some years ago. Memphis is the headquarters for the Church of God in Christ, so we had the convocation there uh, in Memphis. Practically all the hotels in Memphis are booked. Hold your people, Church of God in Christ people all over the city, you know, because they come from all over the world, actually. My mom was in one of those hotels. She said about, about five o'clock in the morning, Say, <laughs> one of the preachers, either he, he was, I think he might have been in the room, boom, he was praying out loud. I mean, loud, <laughs> real, real loud, because she would say, he need to be, <laughs> he need to kind of be a little quiet. He waking up here about five o'clock in the morning and so forth. So I thought about Daniel there, that little incident. Uh, Daniel, prayed out loud, everybody knew. They knew the type of person he was, he was a man of prayer. And they wanted to shut Daniel down. Yes. Uh, it's just like today, there are forces that we are fighting against now. And the Bible said we wrestle not against what? Flesh, Flesh and, and blood. blood, but against principalities, principalities and powers. power. And it talks about the rules of, the the rules of the darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm-hmm. That those are talking about demonic spirits is what that's referring to. That's what that's referring to. So what I'm saying is that when you have you have such disturbances uh, that happen here with with with, with Daniel, Daniel um, Daniel has been praying out, and because he's been praying out, people uh, want to to attack his character. They want to bring Daniel down. So what do they do? They said the way to trap Daniel is, is through his religious practices. We're gonna get the king to pass a law. The word edict it means law. He get him to pass a, a law that said that nobody can, can pray to any gods, ask anything except for you, O king, for the next 30 days. So what does Daniel do? Daniel starts praying. And he prays, what, three times a day. He opens his window. I thought one time, I was thinking, I said, well, look like if there was some, <laughs> look like if there was a law. Let me ask y'all this question. Would there have been anything wrong if Daniel had closed his window? <laughs> what do you all think? Mm-hmm. Daniel opened his window. Would there have been anything wrong if Daniel had closed his window. I'm thinking I'm a bit wrong if he had closed his windows. Y'all talking low, speak up. He would not have been wrong, but I do believe that the Spirit of the Lord put that within him. 
as a trial of his faith and then as an example for us today. Because now, you know, I talked about this some week, weeks ago, the way things are going in our society and, and this call for us to be politically correct, the idea behind that when it comes to the church, they're saying, well, if you want to believe in, in Jesus and all that Jesus stuff, just keep it to yourself. Mm-hmm. We don't, that, that's the idea. Now, they hadn't said it publicly in these words, and some of them have. There's no law as such. We still supposed to have freedom of religion, although that's being attacked, look like every day. But the idea is we don't want you to, to do these things publicly. We don't want you to do this publicly. And, and so, uh, and I can give you examples. You have situations where now, even in the, uh, some of the schools, or some of the places of employment, they do not want you to read your Bible even to yourself. What? Yes, ma'am. Did y'all hear what I said? They don't want you to read, like you you on break and you just read in your Bible. Mm-hmm. They don't want you to do that. One little, uh, little elementary child got in some trouble at lunchtime one day because he said grace over his food. They told me he couldn't do that. Couldn't do that. In a public school? In a public school, yes. Mm. And so you have those type of things that are happening now. I think there are times when we have to take publicly take a stand. You know, and not let these forces just cause us to be silent. Because you got to understand that the in terms of soul winning, witnessing and preaching the gospel, it has to go forth and it has to go forth publicly if souls are going to be saved. But but yes, the, the times are changing. I keep reminding you all of this with, with these lessons here. I keep reminding you because let me give you one other example then we're gonna move on. But let me give you another example. Uh, in the city of Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, this happened maybe about 10 years ago, uh, they had a black fire chief. And the the city officials went back into his past. I think he had written a book or some kind of publication in which he wrote about his views when it came to marriage. He said that marriage was honored in the eyes of God and that marriage should be between a man and a woman that same-sex marriage was not right. It was not right in the eyes of God. Now, he, he stated that on his own private time, not on his job, not on his job. And, and, and actually, the publication came out before he was hired. Did you not know they investigated him? And at first of all, they suspended him. And then when they got through investigating him, they fired him. That's where society is going. But I am grateful to say that uh, he did do the lawsuit because you have freedom of religion. Because he he made it clear he had not made any of these statements on his job at all. You know, but he stood by his statements. He did go through the lawsuit. He won the lawsuit against the city of Atlanta and so Mm. forth. So these are the type of things that we're dealing with. But anyway, I want y'all to know something else uh, in this particular uh, let me see if it's in this section here. Well, when, when, they, when they came up with the accusation, uh, the king certainly uh, brought, had Daniel brought in. He wants to know from, from Daniel, is it true? Because verse 14 said, then the king, when he heard these words, was so displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel. Well, that, I'm, I'm kind of jumping ahead. That was something that's the one to uh, go, but maybe that's in the next section. Let me just state this. Once they brought Daniel in, and Daniel appears to be a friend of the king, Daniel had integrity. Daniel was his best official. King realized what they have done. That's why verse 14 uh, uh, lets us know that when he heard this thing, he was displeased with himself because he realized that they really had deceived him. Yes. And in one sense, set a trap for him too. Mm-hmm. 
All right. Certainly a trap for that. Okay, let's uh I was looking at one of the questions before we go to the next section. Okay. Uh question that's on page 103 says, where is the line for believers when it comes to ignoring or knowingly disobeying the laws that restrict religious freedom? Where is the line? Where is the line for believers when it comes to ignoring or knowingly disobeying the laws that restrict religious freedom? What do you all think? Mm -hmm. Tough question. Well, go go to the bike to sound so they can hear you too on, on Facebook. If you don't mind. Right yeah, that's the one she's been going to. I know we have to live by the laws of the land, but as far as um, freedom of religion, I look at it a little bit different. Um, uh, because I like how you was reading about Daniel, you know, it said, I uh, was reading one of the paragraphs where it said, he was praying to protest against the um, the Persian and he said, if that was something that was, was in him. Mm -hmm. And he was used to doing that. So uh, if we, as believers, if it's just something in us, and we just, you know, and what's, um, well, we are obeying the Lord and what, you know, uh, the word of God. And um, that's somewhat of a difficult, difficult question to me. Mm -hmm. But I, I, as a believer, I still believe we just have to, you know, do what the Lord says to do. And I guess, I, mean, I hate to say the word like this, but the consequences afterwards, I guess. Okay. Someone else. Come on, some out on Zoom. Y'all just, I know y'all got some opinions. I'm looking at some names so that some folks I know can talk. Somebody unmute on Zoom. Let's hear your opinion right quick. The question, where is the line for believers when it comes to ignoring or, or knowingly disobeying laws that restrict religious freedom? I just saying it. You want to say something, Sister, Sister Mayor? No. <laughs> just trying to think. <laughs> okay. I don't think we could right, do a blanket statement. Yeah. I think when it comes to your job, there are certain things that you can and cannot do on your job. Okay. Um, I cannot um, put my books aside and preach to my students. Right. You know, I've been hired to uh, teach them English. And so I cannot just uh, put everything aside and decide I'm going to teach Sunday school during my class time. So it, it depends on what the situation is. Now, are there opportunities uh, that, that God blesses me to share with coworkers and friends? Absolutely. And I asked him, I said, well, Lord, open a door for me to share. And then make me wise enough to know that you've opened this door and give me the courage to share when, you know, when this opportunity presents itself. So I think that in all things, we ought to acknowledge him and he'll direct our paths. But I do think that there, you know, there is going to come a time, Pastor, and as you said, there already is a time where it's going to come down to whether we are going to, um, you know, choose to exhibit our faith as Daniel did or whether we're going to be uh, shut down. I think that in, in, in a lot of situations that the church needs to be more vocal. We as saints, we need to be more vocal on the political scene in the sense that we must vote. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I, we don't tell people how to vote, but I definitely think that we must vote. We must use our power to affect change in our communities. We must get involved with things in our community. So, because if we, if anybody's going to do the right thing, we want good, safe people in some of these positions. So there's gonna, you know, we, when you say draw the line, that's a, uh, draw the line, you know, when it comes to ignoring or, and, knowingly, or knowingly disobeying laws. Now, if there comes a law that says, you cannot read your Bible period, you know, in your home, then that's a line that we may have to cross. Well, I even say um, reading publicly 
we may have to cross that line. Because uh, keep in mind, the ideal is now what you believe, let it be just you and your small circle. So when you say reading publicly, where where do we read publicly besides well, the church? Well, church is public. Yeah, It's absolutely. definitely public. But if we have freedom of religion, freedom of speech, then it gives us the right to publicly uh, declare, declare and exhibit our faith. Right, our agree. faith. Publicly. I definitely agree. And that's where they're trying to stop you now. And so we have to be very careful. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and I don't want to get into the politics, like you just said, the, the fact that we don't tell people how to vote. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I always tell you all, Little the Valley, don't blindly vote for the Democrat. Don't Absolutely. just vote because, you know, they're a Democrat. You didn't know what they're saying. One of the difference between the two parties is that, and I'm going to tell you all now, I do not agree with a lot of things the Republicans say. But one of the things they say that is, is true they're saying that there's some things that are coming up in this nation where they are trying to deny you your rights constitutionally. You see, when they uphold the church, that's denying your right constitutionally because the constitution gives you freedom of religion. It gives you freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. And I think that more of us in the black churches need to take a closer look at that. I don't mean you got to agree with anything, but you need to look at what they're saying on a situation like that. Now, uh, you know, you talked about on the job and you you being a teacher, I, I definitely agree with that because I, I know of a situation where a preacher on his job, he started preaching to the people and he went a step further. He got into the hoop like you would be in church, <laughs> you know, hooping and, and hollering. And, and the, the boss came in and said, look, preacher, I didn't hire you to preach. I hired you to do the job. A couple of days later, he did the same thing. He got fired. So he was out of place in a situation like that. But there could be some other situations uh, where it demands that you speak up. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is where I feel like the Spirit of the Lord uh, really put it in Daniel's heart to do what he did, to pray a lot, ask that question earlier. I was just thinking, uh, you know, I think about social media how you can say anything you want to on your page unless right. you speak out against homosexuality. And so when you speak out against homosexuality, Facebook going to shut you down if somebody uh, reports you. And so they're, they're going to silence you. And so the thing about it is we don't, we don't uh, single out homosexuals no. because we know that sin is sin, regardless of what it is. However, there is a homosexual agenda that's taking America by storm. And so we must realize that so we can't afford to be silent. We can't afford to sit back while, while all of these things are happening to our country and, and, and attacking the family. And so there, there, are time, there are times come that we have to speak out that we, you know, we, we can't, we're not gonna be silenced for, from any sin. And, and it's amazing to me how, because on, you know, I'm in different, even church groups, and, you know, and if you, when you start speaking out against certain things, then of course they want to say you're judging, you're doing this. So there is a, a movement to silence the church. There's a movement to silence Christians because they don't want, you know, they don't, you know, they don't want us. They call us Bible thumpers. They don't want us to t talk about what the Bible says. So we have got to realize as the tide is certainly changing church. The tide is certainly changing. Will you be silent? Because we've got to, we've got to, as you said, we've got to draw the sign. The sign, the line has been drawn in the sand. The question is, will you stay behind that line, or will you determine I'm going to cross that line when the Lord gives me to say something? All right, let's go further because we're about to run out of time here. Look at the next. We got two more outlines. We're going to shorten them. Again, our subject is trust exhibited. Uh, the next section, verses 15 through 18, the door shut. I need a reader to read those verses real quickly, if I can get a reader who wants to read. Okay, come on, since I, I don't have anybody on Zoom that's, that's holding up to unmute the mic. So Sister Lana is going to read for us 15 through uh, 18. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, 
Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thy service continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Mm. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Do you all notice that this trap was not just set for Daniel, but it's set for the king? Mm -hmm. Because when the king wanted to rescue Daniel, he said, wait a minute, king, you got to remember what the law says. The law of the Medes and Persians is as such that when a king gives a decree or gives a law, even the king cannot change that. Now, that, that reminds me when we talked about that image that Nebuchadnezzar saw in Daniel chapter 2. You remember the head of gold, the, the chest and arms was silver, and, and you know the, the midsection was brass or bronze, legs of iron, the feet partly clay, partly iron. And what did what what did Daniel tell him about that? He said, now the head of gold represents you. Gold is superior. He said, those kingdoms coming after you are going to be what? Inferior. Meaning that those emperors or kings would not be as powerful as Nebuchadnezzar. Are y'all with me here? And of course you see it, cause see uh, King Darius here, he's representing the, the silver, you know, the chest and the arms. If it had been Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar could have made the law and changed it. Mm. He could have changed it. That's why he was a gold. But when we get to the silver kingdom, even though they're gonna kind of overlap Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, the kings of the of the Medes and Persians were not as powerful. They couldn't change their law. Hmm. Another example would be when you go to the book of Esther. You remember that wicked man, Haman, uh, deceives uh, King Ahasuerus to pass a law to destroy all the Jews. This is the same kingdom that Darius is over, the, the, the Persians. And, and remember, he couldn't change the law, but what did he do? He passed another law that allowed the Jews to pick up weapons to defend themselves because he was tricked into passing a law that on a certain day, the, the, the people were to rise up and kill all the Jews that were in the Persian Empire. He couldn't change the law, but he passed another one that nullified. So, so you can see that this king, King Darius, was tricked as well. They brought Daniel in and, and uh, he King fell, I have no other choice, but I want y'all to notice something about this king. This is a pagan king. This is why, listen, let me say this. This is why it is so important that we as the people of God let the world know what kind of a God we serve. Yes. Keep on testifying. Keep witnessing the people to let them know that we serve a mighty God, that God can do anything. Apparently Darius, had been in some conversation with, with Daniel. Why? When he got ready to throw or have them to throw Daniel into the lion's den, look at this verse. So now the king spake and said unto Daniel, thy God whom thy service continually, he will deliver thee. That's what the king said, a pagan king said. Your God that you've been yes, served, yes. he is going to deliver you. King even giving Daniel some encouraging words. Anybody want to say anything? All right, let's go to the last section because time is really out, but the tables turn. And those verses 19 through 24. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me 
and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the lion's den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. And the king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. So mm -hmm. after Daniel had spent all night in the lion's den, the king who could not sleep all night long, he's anxious to get there to see what has become of Daniel. And he gets there, he, he cries out, oh, Daniel. Daniel answers back. Daniel lets him know that God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth, to mm. shut their mouth mm. so they could not do any harm to him. God delivered Daniel. Yes. And to show you that these lions would have gotten him if it had not been for the miracle, because that was a supernatural move. The king was so angry that those folk who had tricked him in the first place had every one of them thrown into the lion's den. The question may be, well, why did he have their children and their wives? Anybody want to speculate? Because <laughs> it will be speculation because we don't know. Theologians give some, you know, what they say may have been the case. It may have been the king say, well, this was really uh, on their part of really the rebellion because they were, they were deceitful. So maybe he thought, hey, family's probably in on this. Let me get rid of them too. Or one theologian, I think it's written in our lesson that uh, perhaps the king wanted to make an example. You know how sometimes uh, you have to punish children as school teachers. When I was teaching school, got some folk cutting up. Well, if I get certain folks in class and make an example out of them, it, it's, it settles down. Am I right about this, Ms. Riley? Mm -hmm. especially back in the day where I, where I had that belt and that board and uh, Sister Amy, I ain't had to whoop you, did her. <laughs> See, she, no, sir, yeah, yeah, that's one of my <laughs> former students. You, you didn't know that. She said, she said, no, sir, she was quiet. <laughs> but, <laughs> May say she don't see how Amy was quiet. <laughs> I, I, I think she, I, I think she was pretty quiet because <laughs> when she first started, when she first came to the church, I I didn't I did not recognize, didn't know her, and she had to tell me that, she, that you know who she was and that she was one of my, my former students. But sometimes you do that and things so down. So it could be that the king did what the king did this to make some examples out. But the biggest thing is the, the, the lessons that trust exhibited. Daniel. Faith was shown. He believed God. He kept praying. And what happened? God delivers him. God brings him out. And the tables were turned. I think right here in America, I, you know, and I think I mentioned this before. We get ready to close in a moment. I view the church as a sleeping giant. I really do. It's a sleeping giant. Because if, if we testify about that we have the power of the Holy Ghost and that God's power is greater than, than what the world can be against us, we ought to tap into that resource and use that power. I think if the church came more consecrated and we really cried out to God, we really prayed, I think that the Spirit of God will enable us to stand and to change some things that are going on in this society. We cannot afford a uh, class. We cannot afford not to preach the gospel. We cannot afford not to speak out on abortions. I got to preach against that a little bit more, you all, because so many people don't know that that's a sin, that it is wrong, that it is the killing of some innocent baby. We cannot afford to let some other things that are coming in. So stuff, listen, every one of you parents need to know what's going on with your children at school. Stuff is creeping in. Now it's not quite as bad in Mississippi yet, 
but it's in the pipeline. Some of the stuff that they're doing in some of the northern states where they're teaching uh, about sex and different forms of it that that we call perversion. And and uh, just just do the research. You'll find out where some parents have opposed and said, "I don't want my child to be taught that. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't want you teaching them that. I won't. I won't take them out of that class when you're teaching it." The school should turn around and, and use the court, got the court involved in the court say, you can't remove your child. Your child is part of the school, they're gonna take this course. They're gonna hear this. And so that's the kind of stuff that we have going on right now. But I'm gonna read this last paragraph and then if we got any more comments we hear, we're gonna close out. The last paragraph of this lesson is that the account of Daniel in the lion's den reminds us that we can trust God in all circumstances. Others may try to limit our worship or discourage us from taking our faith too seriously. In some places today, believers face persecution and death for their faith. And that's happening, y'all. People are being killed in Africa, in Asia, and other places. Nevertheless, we can trust God. We, we, nevertheless, we can trust that, that God knows our situation and will act in our situation to bring honor to himself as we remain faithful to him. Any other comments, questions? Okay. I think this is a good lesson. It's a familiar story, but sometimes we need to go to some of these familiar stories and examine them uh, thoroughly. We thank God for you. We want to receive an offering, or you can give your offer on Sunday if you would like to, but I want you to include a Bible study offering. If you've been blessed by this ministry and you would like to share, um, then do so. Uh, that, that's a blessing to the ministry that the gospel goes for. Uh, let me just say this, that uh, we plan to be here Sunday. The Lord said the same, 9.30, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock Sunday school, 10.30 worship. You're doing youth Bible study tomorrow? Yes. Youth Bible study. Yeah, youth, good lesson, good lesson. Youth Bible study tomorrow. She didn't get a chance to do it yesterday, but tomorrow at 5.30, we're all about young people as well as adults who normally uh, listen virtually, meet Sister Riley for the youth Bible study prayer and then youth Bible study. Sunday, Sunday school, our worship. Then on Sunday evening, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, 5.30, we're gonna have the prayer revival each night. We're gonna spend time praying and talking to the Lord. Let me also say, we'll give you some more details uh, about next week, we will know soon. We get that information and get a fly. If Superintendent Riley is able to be with us on next Wednesday, we will do the part two of that lesson. If not, then we're gonna go on with the book because that's gonna still do with the end time. So next week it's gonna be a little different. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. So join us certainly on next week as well. The Lord bless you. Lord keep you. We're gonna say good evening to you. God bless you.